discuss the role and responsibilities of their worker as it you pertains know that these people are confusing discipline. though so them talking about labor relations thing um, <laughs> right and lastly we will of course examine the situations of the labor relations school as it relates to the to due process Mr. Marsh? yes i'm hearing you somebody in the chat is saying that they're not hearing anything Colleagues, are you hearing me? Loud and clear. Yes. Mm, this probably from uh, I'm hearing. All right, fair enough. Good. So I said lastly, I'll speak about the situation of the LRC as it relates to due process itself. All right. So let's move into it. So part one of the code is it speaks to establishment and purpose. And it says the code was established to promote good labor relations in the workplace, maintain orderly procedures in an industry for the peaceful and expeditious settlement of disputes by negotiations, conciliation, or arbitration, seeking to protect workers and employers from unfair labor practices. All right? And I'm just going to narrow this down a bit. So, colleagues, if you think back about Jamaica's uh, history, all right? You will observe at some point that we had a period where there were significant uh, upheavals in terms of strikes right across the country uh, on the sugar plantations, or, or let's call them the, the I'll say sugar plantations because they would they would call them that essentially, or in the sugar industry. Uh, you would have issues in manufacturing as well. And I read through some document about a year ago or so where they're saying in any given time there would be more than 50 strikes happening across the country in one given year, 50 or more strikes in some in, in some uh, periods, depending on what was the situation. And essentially, you realize that these this, these types of industrial actions, um, say strike or, or sick outs or so on, it would happen without any kind of negotiation. Good. So what we found or what occurred was that the labor relations code and the Labor Relations and Industrial Disputes Act was established essentially to encourage amicable relations between the employer and the employee. Good. So what these particular documents encourage or advocate is negotiation, conciliation, mediation before any kind of industrial action is contemplated. Good. So it means that before the employee contemplates industrial action, they will have to essentially go through a process and the process involves also consulting with the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Good. In Jamaica, there are mixed sentiments about whether workers have the right to strike or a freedom to strike. What, are, what is your take on it? Do you have a right to strike or a freedom to strike in Jamaica? Yes, we do. What do you have, a right or freedom? Right. Freedom. Freedom, freedom to strike. Freedom to strike. Meaning what? What does the freedom mean there? It's not codified anywhere in terms there. of a right to strike, but you have an ability to strike if you so choose. Who's who's speaking? Um, Wayne McGregor, attorney Wayne. of law. Oh, Wayne, excellent point. And Wayne, correct me if I'm wrong. If an employee indulges in unjustifiable industrial action, can they be terminated? It depends on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get up today and decide you're going to strike and go outside and you're not working and you're going to do what you want to do and not attend to work, can you be terminated? Yes, you can. Okay. Yes. yes, you can. So I'm saying to you that previously that would happen. Persons just say, we're striking today and they go outside and they would march and they would have their placards and so on. But I'm saying to you that in the current dispensation, that does not work. Good you have to follow a protocol. And that protocol is enshrined in the Labor Relations and Industrial Disputes Act. Good? Just to, to ask colleagues here, where does conciliation take place? Come on, colleagues. Hey, you should... Can you say when conciliation takes place? Where does it take place? Conciliation. I mean, it normally is internal. So you would normally have conversations with your management team. The, the reconciliation is done at the management level and staff having conversations. All right. Let me let me just expound a bit on that and just give you some and just refine it. Ideally, the conciliation takes place at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security when the negotiation fails at the local level. 
Good. Are you following, colleagues? Start, yeah, but it starts internally first, correct? Yeah, man, with the, with the negotiations, as I mentioned. So All when right. the negotiations fail internally at the at the local level, meaning internally, then of course the matter may escalate to the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. If it's unresolved at the, at the conciliation level, it may go to arbitration at the Industrial Disputes Tribunal. And it can go further to litigation, which is in the courts. All right. Uh, we're not doing grievance today, but essentially this can be a very lengthy period. It can take years. Good. But I'll say to you that negotiations or discussions at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security and at the Industrial Disputes Tribunal will heavily focus on the stipulations of the Labor Relations Code. Any comments or questions? Any comments? Anything you want clarity on or can I proceed? All right. Um, I suppose I can go on. All right. So part two, employee, employee responsibilities. It says here, and this is from the code, it says good management practices and industrial relations policies which have the confidence of all must be one of management's major objectives. Ideally, employment policies should be developed collaboratively. Employers should acknowledge that workers have a right to belong to trade unions and take part in the union's activities. The very first point here, point the, the first and second point here, colleagues, what does it mean to you? I may have to ask persons, it seems. Any comments on the first and second point? What do, what do you get from it? Good IR climate is a must. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's not a must. Ideally, we'd want good IR climate. Yes. Anything else? Basically, if you don't get hearts and minds in the process, it's not going to be efficient yeah, or right. um, probative to all. Right. So it's simply saying, colleagues, that if management intends to implement any policy that will impact the conditions of employment or the work environment generally, ideally, you want to have that consultation session with the employee or sorry, with the employees or their representatives. And tying back that now to discipline, I'm saying to you colleagues, if you intend to draft or if you have a disciplinary policy in place, policy and procedure, or a grievance policy and procedure, simply put, you have to have these consultation sessions with the employees or their representative. There shouldn't be a case where management unilaterally drafts a policy, a disciplinary policy or a grievance policy and does not share it with the workers or the or the representative, it may create chaos in the space. If you make any modification to these policies as well, you need to communicate it. Are we clear on that, colleagues? Are you following? Yeah. I want to hear from others. I'm not hearing anybody else at all. Yes. Dr. Marsh. Yes. Yes. Right, OK. Yes, yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense that um, it should be a collaborative approach because especially if the employees see the wisdom of um, the policy and they Excellent. have a part in it, Excellent. Um, it, it works much better. The bind, you get the bind once yeah. they are, they're sensitized or informed about it. Right. Good. So it means that you need to have the conversation. And if you're updating the policy itself, you need to, of course, have the conversation before making those particular uh, changes, all right? The last point here is saying that all workers have the right to join a trade union. And if you should read the Labor Relations and Industrial Disputes Act, it states that every worker has the right to join or not to join a union which means that no employer in Jamaica can prevent any worker. And by the way, worker includes management. You're also workers if you're in management. You have the right to join or not to join a union. If there is any evidence of union busting, the company can be penalized. And just for clarity, the acts that we have in Jamaica tend to speak to workers. Uh, Work on employee, 
the terms are used interchangeably by many, but there's actually a bit of difference in those in those two concepts, right? So the employee is a person, just so for clarity, for those who I have not mentioned it or those who don't know, the employee is somebody who's employed to the company and there's this linear relationship. Are you listening? Are you hearing me, colleagues? Yes. 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 So yes. The, employee, mm -hmm. the employee is somebody who you would have interviewed, uh, you would have had the job description, you do your onboarding, you do your probation and all those things, right? But the worker may be a bit different because the worker may also include subcontractors, persons who are part of a triangular relationship where a third party is involved. So an example of a worker can be a security guard who has his contract with guardsman, but is, who is based at your location. All right? So the term is used very broadly at times. Workers can also be interns, by the way. All right. Another point I want to make is that for those companies which which is using a flexible work arrangement, or if you're if you have a remote uh, work policy, this also should be discussed with the team members before implementation. Okay. All right. Any comments, questions? All right. Part two, I'm still on part of the, of the code. It says employment responsibilities, adequate and effective procedures for negotiation, communication, and consultation, and settlement of grievances and disputes. All supervisory staff have clear defined responsibilities, are in charge of manageable work groups, understand their responsibilities, have industrial relations, training, Okay, so the very first point here, I'll tie it back to discipline, right? And I will single out the part on communication here. I will say to you colleagues that if you have a disciplinary policy in place or any policy which is relevant to a particular employer group of employees, it must be disseminated. So the disciplinary policy in this context, you should ensure that all employees, let me emphasize at this, this point, all employees, should have access to it. And the word access is important. It's not your responsibility, colleagues, to ensure that all employees read the disciplinary policy, but they should have access to it. Do you agree or disagree? Agreed. Agreed. Access. This is not for you to ensure they read it. Good. And I'll say to you that if I'm chairing a hearing, one of the first questions I'll ask the accused employee is that do you have access to the disciplinary policy itself and and i would hope that their response is yes because if it is no essentially i am going to pause that hearing why do why would i do that you have no basis they have no basis all right. For the, let me provide. Let me let me give some clarity. I, I don't think all persons here may be following, so I'm going to share something else with you. I'm going to share with you our disciplinary schedule, and I'm going to drive this point home. All right. So employees accused of. Let me share screen again. I'm going to share with you uh, an example of a disciplinary schedule. All right. Let me do this. All right, let me share this one with you. Tell me when you're seeing my screen again. Share a screen. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes. All right, so imagine a, a hearing scenario or situation. The employee is accused of rioting or inciting employees to riot, right? We're at the hearing, I'm sharing the hearing. I asked Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, good day. He says good day to me. I say to him, do you know why you're here? He may say yes. I say to him, do you have access to the company's disciplinary policy? He says no. Why would I not proceed? He probably wouldn't have known that he's not supposed to be rising and inciting and exactly. violence. Very good. Who is that? But Mr. Marsh. Yes. 
considering that that staff member would have been in breach and we proceeded to a disciplinary hearing mm -hmm. in order to thwart the process, if he just says no, he does not have access, that is reason mm -hmm. enough. No, man. So he say, if he says to me, no, he doesn't have access, I'll say to him, were you given the policy? That's my next question. And if he says no to me, has never seen it, then we're going to have a problem. And if HR can produce a document, if HR can say to me, uh, Lauren or Dr. Marsh, we have proof here that during the orientation session, he received it, he signed for it. Or they can say, um, Lauren, it's on the intranet. Or Dr. Marsh, it's on his computer screen. It's on his, 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 his device that he's using. Then we're going to have a challenge. Colleagues, do you see a challenge or not? Yeah, I see, yeah, clearly. Yes. I see the challenge. Yes. Because there's there's no way you can attempt to suspend or dismiss me without me knowing about this particular document here. So colleagues, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you some advice which I don't share often. I will say if it is even to create the schedule here to save yourself, yes. create the schedule here. I can't go through all of it now. One of my clients just create it and disseminate it. Spanish don't remember going on, so Jaja, I remember I'm going to meet you. Uh, I'm hearing somebody going to Spanish don't yeah, and, yeah. and so on. Sean, you're on, Sean. Sean, mute. Sean. Um, Dr. Marsh. Yes, yes, go ahead. Donna Cole, ATL. We yeah. met yesterday. How are you? Donna, how are you doing? Again. Donna, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Nice Question We have a mm -hmm. disciplinary of, sorry, schedule of offenses. Mm -hmm. But usually when I'm onboarding or new recruits, I just mm -hmm. give them a copy of it. Excellent. There's no section on it for them to sign. No, man. Donna, In you have to fix that right away. Or okay, make awesome. sure they signed for it right away. I had a okay. case. I had a case about two months ago, and I had to travel so far to Montego Bay to chair this hearing. And uh, only to find out the company had the relevant documents in place. But when I we were at this particular hearing, I asked the employee, "Did you receive the, the disciplinary policy?" And he said, "No." And I, I I said to him, "Was it shared with you, with your, by your supervisor, by HR, have you ever?" you know, gotten a copy, is it, and he, he says he has never seen it. Uh, the issue was that HR, the HR manager was saying, you know, Dr. Marsh, we gave it to them during orientation, but the fact is nobody signed. All right, so ensure they sign for it. Uh, and if you, if, you can, if you can circulate, Lauren, give me a minute, if you can circulate it any other way, please do so. Yes, go ahead, Lauren. Yes, Dr. Marsh, um, sometimes, you have in certain organizations um, common laborers, for example, mm -hmm. that may not be very literate. Yes. Um, what if the company says it's available um, on whatever platform and so